Hey guys. Hello. Welcome back to the Zelensky Life. Where today we are doing video two in the first Budget Friday mini series. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how long it goes. For now, it's a mini series. But this is what that's going to be. So enjoy. So today we're covering how to start a budget. Mm -hmm. um, before you start your budget, there's a few preliminary steps that you're gonna to wanna to do, and that's to grasp a handle. Grasp a handle? Get a handle, get a grasp. So the, the, the basics of what a budget is, is just knowing how much money you have coming in and when, and how much you have going out and when. Mm -hmm. And ideally the first number is bigger than the second number. Um, but we're gonna go through with basically our real numbers. Yep. Um, and break down for you exactly how um, to go about doing that. So I think the first thing you're going to want to do is print off or look online if you'd rather do that. But mm -hmm. look back over like the last three months of your bank statements. And which, credit card statements. And credit card statements, yes. You want to know where all of the money coming in is coming from and where it's all going. Now this is the most time consuming part. Of yeah, setting this, up a this is the, the boring. You know, Elmer Fudd sitting in his wintry cabin being attacked by ducks. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, image that people fear when they think about budgeting. So we're going to run through real quick how to do that. And the reason why we say three months is because three months averaged gives you a much more accurate idea mm -hmm. of what your spending actually looks like and your income versus just one month. Um, so again, we're going to take you through our actual budget. Oh, and Cody does not have the screen recording on here. I don't? You do, but you didn't have it as a oh. shortcut. Oh. Okay, so for obvious reasons, I have blocked out our personal we information. We blocked out the important parts. But what you want to do is you want to grab a highlighter. We're doing this on the iPad, so this is what it's going to we'll be like. We'll have different highlighters. Um, but you're going to highlight categories. Now what categories you want to set them up really is up to you. Mm -hmm. A lot of banks nowadays will actually do this for you where they'll kind of guesstimate like all of these transactions for groceries, all of these mm -hmm. for gas. Yeah. It's still good for you to go through though and kind of really yeah. look at it. If, if you let the bank do it, it's one thing to just look at it and say, okay, I spent this much here, here, and here, but it's a little, it, it gets it into your head a little more if you actually look at it yourself and mm -hmm. go through and kind of track things down. So the first thing I would probably do is look at my bills, like the fixed bills that have to come out every month and, and highlight them a certain color. So like we know this one is our rent. This one is our power. Um, I think most of our other bills actually come off our credit card and I didn't save our credit card statement for this. That's probably not a bad thing anyway. Um, but if you had like, insurance and stuff coming off of there, like we have insurance coming off of there. Basically the things you want to strike out for the bills is rent, insurance, um, car payments, power, cable, internet, that sort of thing, like all your regularly scheduled, predictable, consistent bills. Well, like in this one here is our car insurance. Our apartment insurance, like our tenant's insurance comes off of our credit card. That's my bad, I probably should have. Mm -hmm downloaded that but uh so we've had a really hectic day we've been planning to do this video for a while but the day just completely here we had a credit rebuilding loan mm -hmm. that was a bill not a debt which is why it's going under bill debt will get a different color and that was it for oh, that where um etf withdrawal at court. oh yeah we did get charged twice that month okay and again, that's why it's good to do a three month average because in mm -hmm. June we actually paid two, two uh, at per bills that month. And then the month prior, we didn't have any. So you always want to do three months. Um, so now we could go back through and we could do, you know, discretionary spending. We'll say like groceries and gas, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, this will be the stuff that still occurs all the time, but that it's not always the same amount, you know, like Valerie said, groceries, gas, um, I don't know what else, just subscriptions, I think maybe. Oh, I missed this If, if you got fluctuating subscriptions. Wait, these bills come out. Uh, yeah. Subscriptions I would actually put under spending money because it's not necessarily a yeah, necessity kind of thing. Yeah, not a necessity. 
So these are gas and groceries. Um, household items could go on here as well. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure what a category was or like what a transaction was, just do your best guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're going to have a pretty good idea on what's what, but uh, it, it can be illuminating to go through and see, you know, exactly how much you spend on certain things. Cause like, it's one thing to say, Hey, you know, like I fill up my car and I need to fill up, I buy kind of the bare minimum. It's another thing to look at your bill and say, Holy crap, I drove a thousand dollars last month. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Not that we generally drive a thousand dollars. Good Lord. No. Not for a very long time, at least. And I might cut some of this out or down too, just for the sake of saving time in this video. Mm -hmm. Bill payment, money mentors? That's a bill, like a debt payment. Mm -hmm. So that'll get a separate one. Gotcha. Okay, we'll say that's good. Then we'll go through and do debt payments. Because um, those are high priority ones. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're covering in red because debt is bad. Yes. So what did we have here? Where did I see them? No payment. Yeah, okay, so money mentors, the car payment, money mentors again. These were like debt snowball payments that we were making, but uh, it's still MasterCard. MasterCard, I'm not going to include. The reason for us is because our MasterCard is paid in full every month if you watch our YNAB videos it's regular spending so that would have been some of our subscriptions our insurances stuff like that mm -hmm. um, but if you had a credit card in which you were carrying a balance on then that would be a debt payment as well gotcha makes sense another debt snowball payment yeah and i think just a caveat to the video this probably isn't going to wind up being like an exhaustive extensive thing normally you take much a little more time go through line by line yeah you know make sure you're good we're just doing like a quick mock-up just to give you a rough idea yeah and then we could do like fun money spending so this again our subscriptions come off our credit card but like your netflix subscription mm -hmm. would be you know a fun money thing i know that dollarama was a fun money thing yeah if you're like me and you like going to uh Best Buy. go to the barber every now and then and get like a nice shave and a little bit pampered Dining out is that a big be, one. Dining out, definitely. Yeah, we love the dine out. You will see a lot of blue. So much blue. Uh, like probably the rest of this is going to be blue. The Amazon I'm not highlighting right now because I can't remember what they were. Um, I'm not sure what that one was. And again, you're just looking to do your best. Sit the dishes, Winnipeg your best guesstimate. What you can do too is you can still take a highlighter and highlight all the ones that you're not sure about mm -hmm. and do a total for that as well. Oh, I see another bill that I missed on here. Tim Hortons, anything with mogul spending, spending money, mm -hmm. indigo, and if you're like us and you have like a really large amount of dining out, you might even opt to have dining out as its own category separate yeah. from spending money. <laughs> Doing it like this really makes me aware of how much we mm -hmm. dine out. Yeah, which is just proof that like even for people that are on top of their budgets already the way we are, it's still good practice every now and then just to make sure that you have involved yourself with a false sense of security. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then obviously you would want to do your income as well. You would want to highlight and get an idea for your income, which... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because uh, 
you know, you, you can also run into trouble with your budget, even if you make enough money. Um, if the money comes in the day after your bills are due, you'd want to know that ahead of time. That way you can pre-plan for it. Um, because there, there's nothing quite as personally embarrassing as picking up some late fees and NSF fees or whatever, because you have the money there the day after you needed it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's much better to, you know, like I said, know ahead of time. Uh, you see that in our videos too when we budget forward where, you know, just in this last video, we put away the bulk of next month's rent um, because I would hate to have rent track come out on the first with the paycheck going on the second. So we make sure it's there beforehand. Yeah, exactly. And again, I'm not doing like a super thorough mm -hmm. thing here. This is just to kind of give you guys an idea of how you would go through and do this. Okay, so let's say that's it. So then once you have everything highlighted across all of your, whatever accounts you yeah, spend on. Whatever all categories your, you want across whatever accounts you use. Debit cards, credit cards, anything that you spend mm -hmm. money on. And then you would go through and you would start tallying up how much you spent mm -hmm. in each category. So take all the pink ones, if that was your bills, total them up, divide it by those three months. Take all your fun money, total it up, divide it by that three months. Yeah. And also pro tip, um, when I was doing my own budgeting initially by myself, when I was just a single punk grade out of high school, I was running back through my, um, oh my God, what are they called? Accounts, running back through my accounts every single week, every time I got paid, trying to guess what bill was coming out next mm -hmm. because somehow it just never occurred to me that it happens the same time all the time and you can just write that stuff down and know it. Yeah. Um, the only caveat to that is if the bill would, if, if the bill was scheduled to come out, say on like the 15th and the 15th happened to be a Saturday or a Sunday, then it's going to come out the following Monday. Yeah. The um, next business day. Yeah. Which in the long run isn't really like ultra important, but it's still good to know because I would see different days sometimes and it would stress me out. Yeah. So first things, figure out what you're spending in each category on average. Take all of that spending and then all of your income and figure out what the difference is. If you're spending more than you make, that's a big red flag mm -hmm. and you're going to have to figure out where you're going to cut down. Can you cut down on subscriptions? Can you cancel gym membership? Can you stop dining out so much? Figure out where the leaks are in your budget yeah. and plug them. Yes, or definitely. alternatively, make more money. Start driving for Uber, skip the dishes, yeah, there's be a pizza so many delivery. things you can do to make more money somehow. Look around your house, little garage sales, sell stuff on Kijiji, yeah. Facebook Marketplace. If whatever. you have like uh, walk dogs for people, mm -hmm. pet sit, yeah. you know, mow lawns, whatever, sweet driveways. There, there's tons of ways you can make more money. Just the, the thing is you want to make more money than you're spending. Yes. Because otherwise you're going to be in a lot of trouble very quickly. And then just what Cody said, the, the next thing is you want to look at your bills, your fixed bills and subscriptions mm -hmm. and take note of what days they come out and write it down on a calendar and write your paydays down on a calendar. And then what you can do is you can look and say, okay, I get paid, let's say it's Friday the 3rd. And from Friday the 3rd until Friday, what would that be? The 17th would be your next paycheck? Let's say if it's two weeks. Yeah, something like that. And then you would look at all your bills that are due between the 3rd and the 17th or whenever your next paycheck is. If you get paid on the 1st and 15th, you would do that. Okay, I get paid on the 1st. What are all of my bills that come out between now and my next paycheck on the 15th? Yeah. And, and highlight them. So paycheck one could be blue, highlight all your bills blue. Paycheck on the 15th could be red, highlight all those bills red. And then you've got like a visual piece it out. Yeah. How much are you paying out of each? And depending whether you get paid weekly, bi-weekly, uh, once a month in some cases, whatever the case may be, you can break up your budget into similar um, quarters, halves, I guess, and just worry about, you know, in the first half of the month, we got you know, power, rent, um, car insurance, car payment coming out. Mm -hmm. So beforehand, make sure that money's there. Yeah. That way they can pull it when they need to and you go, don't get dinged with an NSF fee or a late fee or whatever. And in the beginning, you will likely be budgeting paycheck to paycheck. You're mm -hmm. not going to have like a, a, an emergency fund set aside or anything. So if you find that you're in the position where all of your bills are coming out on the first half of the month, and your first paycheck doesn't 
cover that, start calling some of those places like your cell phone bill, your power bill, and ask them to change your billing date. Most of them will, and then you can kind of split it up. That way you have a more even distribution between what's being pulled out the first half of the month and what's being pulled out of the second half of the month. Once you get a month ahead in your budget and you've got an emergency fund built up and we cover this in later videos, then it doesn't really matter so much because the yeah, money will always you, be there. You have a little more wiggle room because there's always going to be that buffer there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in the ideal situation, your bills are just always going to be pulling out of your buffer yeah. and you'll always just be topping off the buffer. Yeah, but in the beginning, it may make sense to call some, some of your utility companies and stuff and start changing mm -hmm. your billing dates if you need to. Don't yeah. be afraid to do that. And if, if you need to think about changing some of your lifestyle choices, mm -hmm. um, whatever the case may be. Um, we just finished not long ago reading I Will Teach You To Be Rich mm -hmm. by Ramit Sadie. Mm -hmm. um, phenomenal book. I really, really like the way um, he approaches budgeting and personal finance. Mm -hmm. And he talks about doing it as a conscious spending plan. Yeah. Um, so psychologically, I guess, approaching it from the idea of or not of I can't do X, Y, Z, but I would rather do A, B, C. Yeah. You know, so if you really, really want to travel, maybe you decide that you'd rather make coffee at home than go to Starbucks. Yeah. So that you can save up to splurge on travel. Yeah, I do highly recommend that book if yeah. you're new to budgeting and finances. Yeah, we'll, we'll link it in the description. It's definitely. a great resource. It's, you know, it's not the first finance book we read, and it, I think it was definitely the most illuminating for us. Mm -hmm. So we'll definitely like that for you guys to check out. So this would be your big takeaway from this video is just mm -hmm. look at your spending, look at your income, and get a handle on it. Plug in holes if you've got leaks. If you don't, if you have a whole bunch of transactions amounting to hundreds and hundreds of dollars, and you don't know what you spent that money on, you need to yeah you need to figure it out. Yeah, because you know you can hear all the time money doesn't matter it's the memories that count but if you don't get a handle on your memory most of your memories are going to be about how you don't have money and how you're stressed out and how you can't do any of the things you want to do so yeah i don't know if you want to live the best of both worlds it's best to have a handle on it so you can make it do what you want it to instead of just doing whatever it does and then you have to play catch up yeah and and this is i think the most time consuming part mm -hmm. of the budget in the next video i think we'll be talking about figuring out what your debt load is and creating a debt payoff plan there and mm -hmm. how that works into your budget, yeah. which is a little time consuming as well, but I promise you guys, this is the most tedious time consuming part of making a budget. So muddle your way through it, pull up your pants, yeah. suck it up, just get it done. It'll, your, I promise you your budget will be so much more effective yeah. if you do this. If you don't do this step, you're gonna be guessing and it's gonna take you months to figure out why you're overspending in all these categories when you could have just sat down once, figured it out and made adjustments before you even started. Yeah, and I think another important takeaway because the first time I did this for myself, I was incredibly discouraged when I figured out how much of my paychecks were going to debt. Mm -hmm. And I think pretty much the only thing that turned my mindset around it around was um, to look at how much was going every month and realize that if I paid my debt off, that money would be mine. Yeah. It would no longer disappear to go elsewhere. Um, so, yeah. you know, after you've looked through this and you see how much money you have going to debt, if you have debt, just daydream for a bit. What kind of life could you lead if that money was yours and not the car companies or mm -hmm. the phone companies or... The credit card. Yeah, the credit card companies because even if you have a good interest rate, they'll still soak you good. Mm-hmm. So that's it. That's all we're going to cover in this video. This is a lot to do as it is. Yes, this is so. a very big taxing homework heavy video. <laughs> um, probably the biggest of the series, but it will definitely be the biggest payoff in the long run. So mm -hmm. we hope it helps. Yeah. So that's it for this video. Yeah, that's it. That's all. So I don't know if you like it, like it. If you don't like it, dislike it twice. And uh, I guess we'll catch you two weeks from now for the next one. Bye. Bye.